In this lesson, we'll write our first shader in Unity. What is a shader? To keep it simple, shaders are functions written to be executed by the graphics card. There are different kinds of shaders that you could encounter. Vertex shader, hull shader, geometry shader, domain shader, or fragment shader. But only two of these are compulsory, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. For the time being, we will ignore the others. Let's look closer at how the graphics card renders an object to understand what we should do. When we give a model to render to the graphics card, it needs to perform several steps in order to produce the final picture that will be displayed on our screen. This process is usually called the rendering pipeline, and each step has a specific purpose. Let's have an overview. For example, let's render a triangle. The first step is called the vertex shader. Since it's a programmable step, we will write the code of this section. The vertex shader will be executed once for each model's vertice. In our case, the triangle has three vertex, then the vertex function will be used three times. And each time, we will retrieve the data from a different vertice as an input of the function. In this function, we mainly have to transform the vertex coordinates into their final position on the screen. The wording is a little cumbersome, but we will make this clearer in another lesson. The results of the vertex function will be sent to the rasterizer stage. The main purpose of the rasterizer stage is to convert the primitives or vectors information that we give it into an image composed of pixels. And for each pixel, the fragment shader, sometimes called pixel shader, will be executed. Usually, the result of this function is a color, the final pixel's color to be more precise. This value will be stored in a frame buffer which will eventually be used to display the pictures on the screen. In summary, the vertex shader is executed for each vertice of our model. The result is sent to the rasterizer which determines the pixels needed to draw the picture. For each of these pixels, the fragment shader is executed and its result is saved in the frame buffer used to render the final result. That's the theory. Let's supply this by writing our first shader. In my Unity scene, I create a new Unlit shader file and I open it. Let's remove almost all data in order to keep only the main structure. Our shader code begins just after the CG program keyword, like we saw in the previous video. First, we need to indicate the name of our vertex function and the name of our fragment function. Rewrite pragma vertex vert pragma fragment frag. The meaning of these two lines is my vertex function will be named vert and my fragment function will be named frag. Then we need something to retrieve information from the graphics card and send our results back. We will create two structures. The first one will be used to retrieve the vertex data from our model. I call it app data. For this example, this structure will only contain a float for named vertex and bind it with a semantic position. At this point, if you don't know what a structure, a float, or a semantic is, please take a look at the annex video I made about these points. The second structure will be used to communicate information between our vertex shader and our fragment shader. I often name this structure V2F, a short way to say vertex to fragment. 
we add a variable called pos for position and we bind this value with the semantic sv position. Now let's write our vertex function. Its name is vert and we are expecting a structure app data as an input. We call it v for vertex. The result of our vertex shader will be sent in a v2f structure. Inside, I create a structure v2f named o, like output. I assign a value in the pose variable and I return it. That's all. At this moment, we don't care about the value we put in the pose variable, but we'll come back later to modify it. Our fragment function, named frag, receives our v2f structure as an input and returns a float4 as an output. The result of this function will be binded with the semantic sv target. Inside the function, we just return a rgba color with a float4, let's say green, with float4 0,1,0,1. Now let's save and return to our Unity scene. We create a new material from this shader. We add a cube in our scene and we'll apply the material to our cube. Let's see what happens. Curiously, it seems that the cube was removed. But if you click where the cube was, we can see that Unity still allows you to select it. So the cube is just invisible. The reason is that we have stored an incorrect position for each of our vertex in the vertex shader. We will replace this line by mul unity matrix mvp, v.vertex. We save and return to the scene. Now the cube appears with a uniform green color. That's the result expected. Note that if you have one of the latest Unity's versions, the line mul unity matrix mvp, v dot vertex shall be automatically replaced by the macro unity object to clip pose. Don't be scared if it seems obscure. In the next video, we will try to understand the meaning of this line and what the matrix is. Before we finish this lesson, let's add a color in the properties section named color. Let's declare a variable with the same name in the CG section to make this color accessible by our functions. Instead, to return a green color, let's try to return this variable. If you select your cube, you are now able to change the color from the inspector in Unity. That's all for today. I hope this video could be helpful. If you have any question, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching, see you soon.